aren't you thankful to be in the house of God? I'm thankful that you've decided to come and join us in service. I, I welcome all our guests. Why don't we give our guests a hand clap tonight? And I'm thankful for our faithful people who decided to show up and have church. Uh, if you would, go ahead and stand. We've got a few prayer requests tonight. If you would, continue to remember Helen Sellers. Remember uh, Gary Sellers as well. Remember Mary Laid, Paul Rollison, uh, Jackie Jernigan, Leonard Smith, Ellison. Remember Reed Sparks and Glenda Peters. And Brother Rogers asked that remember his brother and mother. There's a bunch of needs, you know, tonight. And I'll be honest, I've, I've had a burden for, for prayer over the past few weeks. And I just think about all the times that I was lost or undone and all the times that I needed somebody to pray for me if it was a, a touch in my body or if it was that I was wayward. And I begin to think about the power of prayer and what it could do and just the simplicity of our spoken word to God, the dialogue that we give him. If he could just simply move in an instant and things could change. And, and sometimes I believe that we don't hold a lot of weight in our prayer. We just believe that we're reciting words or we're just going to say, hey, whatever that guy says, we're going to kind of back that prayer. But I wonder if we could pray with fervency tonight. I wonder if we could believe, hey, not only will God move in these needs, but he'll move in this service. I believe he can do it. If you believe that, why don't you help me pray tonight? God, you see every need in the house, Lord. You know every situation, every circumstance that we are going through, God. You know every door we walk through before we even get to it, Lord. And I ask that you just begin to move in this service tonight, God. That you just begin to let your glory fall down upon this service, God. That you begin to anoint every spoken word. That you anoint every singer, every musician, God. That you let the preached word go forth, Lord, and let it begin to transform lives, God. I want you to move in these needs tonight, God. I, if it be your will, I won't care answer to just fall off God if it be your will I want situations to change God I, I just want your will in this house tonight God I want your will in my life Lord I, I just want to see your will take place tonight Jesus in your precious and holy name if you believe that tonight why don't you say amen brother Gene's gonna come and he's gonna sing us a congregation you know I find a new love for these older songs just because a lot of times you'll find they talk about heaven and heaven's somewhere I want to go. Heaven's a place that I want to find myself, but I want to be able to look across when I get through the gates and see y'all there as well. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord, everyone. By the way, I want to thank y'all for praying. I never was because I'm feeling better. Say that I, I always thank y'all for that word. Oh, I want to thank you. as I journey.
All right. I want to dedicate this next song to Brother Jason. View the land. He said he loved that song. I love that song. That's the place we're striving for, folks. View the land. Y'all help me when we get to the course. If you know the verse, help me there too. probably resonates with this older generation more than me, but it just simply says a few more days. I know we've got to deal with things every day, but just a few more days. What's one day on this earth, what's 70 years on this earth compared to an eternity of glory? You know, I want to brag on Brother Rogers. He's our one shoe fits all. He's Preacher on Sunday, teacher on Sunday morning, and usher on Wednesdays. 
No, this is our missions offering tonight. This is for Grace Crossroads Church in Florence, Alabama, and First Apostolic Church of Mountain City. And, you know, these are churches that need help. These are people that need help. These are people that need the gospel. And you personally are making a difference in somebody's life of eternity. Just the simple giving that we do here, just a monetary giving, you know, big, small, medium, however you feel that you need to bless them, it makes a difference for somebody's eternity, and I want to be known for giving. So if our men of music would go ahead and play us a... One time, I, I heard somebody mention that he had a voice from heaven. <laughs> I believe that to be true. If y'all would worship with Brother Keith tonight. I, I forgot to call you, Brother Caden. How old are you, Brother? Now, I've been fighting with this PA all day long. And uh, if, if you've never seen the devil get in the PA, boy, you don't know what you missed. But anyway... Uh, if you'll bear with me another service or two, I'll have it. I'll have it worked out. I hope we're trying out some new speakers, new subs. We've got new mics about a month or two ago, so we just we swapped up everything. So <coughs> it's taking me a little while to get it all set. But if you won't give up on me, I'll uh, I'll get it eventually. <coughs> When I face a trial or test, I know I've done my best. I know somehow the Lord will see me through. When temptations come my way, I get on my knees and
Marcy would be making her way. Uh, you know, I may be a little partial, but when she sings, she pulls the heartstrings of my soul. It feels like there's there's nobody that quite gets me the way she does when she's worshiping. But, you know, I hope that she blesses you the way that she blesses me when she sings. Uh, Gene, where are you at? Where's he at? He done gone home? He done his little part and went home, didn't he? Tammy, come on up here. It shouldn't took him that long. I know y'all didn't give that much. Come on. This is the one time you're needed and you're outside.
As the worship team is making their way up tonight, I, I'm reminded of just a little portion that I preached Sunday morning to our students, and I was talking to them about being instant in season and out of season, and a lot of times we'll quote this to a preacher and tell them, hey, you better be ready, but you know, in fact, that's for everybody because, you know, we're not always going to be in season. We're not always going to have a season of harvest, a season of prosperity. But I, can I tell you something tonight? They're about to sing about how great our God is. And I wonder if we could say, you know what, even if I'm in a season of desperation, even if I am in the valley in this season, I'm still going to praise you, God. Why? Because you're worth it. You're a God of praise. You were a good God, and I never deserved anything other than the depths of hell. But I'm going to praise you because you're good. I'm going to praise you because you've done so much for me. Why don't you worship with the worship team?
For your mercy never fails me in all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. the goodness of God. everybody are you thankful for the goodness of God tonight let's give him a great hand clap of praise and magnify him he's worthy of it if he never done another thing for us he'd still be worthy of it he's done way too much for you and I more than we deserve way more than we could stand here all night going around to each individual we would never have enough time if eternity lasts on, to go on about the goodness and greatness of God. Aren't you thankful to be in church tonight on this Wednesday night? So good to see you here. If you're a guest with us, we're so glad you came and worshiped with us. Uh, so good to see so many of us in the family back there. Kathy, husband as well. Great, great people. If you never met, great people. 
Kenny is with us. He's a great man, rock solid, and so thankful for them. Have them in church with us. I didn't come to shake hands with you. I didn't come to pat you on the back. I come to hear a word from God. I want to speak to us tonight for a little bit. Just want to remind us of some things. And I'm going to ask God when he would sweep through this house. He would make a difference in somebody's life here tonight. Do you believe he can make a difference for you? All right, all right. Let's turn in our Bibles, if you will, to the book of Psalms. I'm going to read one verse here. Psalms chapter 31, verse 19. Have your Bibles turned there. Psalms 31, verse 19. Bible would say unto us, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, and which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. The next little bit tonight, find somebody of the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Of God, Will you pray with me and ask God to speak to us tonight? Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. God, we just ask that your will would be done among us here. God, I pray you would hide me behind the cross, God. Help me to remind somebody of the goodness of God. Remind somebody, God, that despite their season, despite their circumstance, despite whatever they may be facing tonight, your goodness has not changed and nor will it ever change, God. And I pray we'd have a resurfacing of the thankfulness of your very present goodness in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated here tonight. Life has a very uh, strong way of making us think that we are going through something that may lack the goodness of God. I want to remind somebody tonight, though, just from the very beginning, that no matter what has changed in your world, no matter the decisions you have made, no matter the circumstances or the season that you find yourself in, no matter what your neighbor does or thinks or says, no matter what direction the world outside the church is going in, no matter who sits in the United States Senate or the House of Representatives, no matter how the election results turn out, no matter what they do in the school systems, don't even matter what people do in your family, one thing that does not change is the goodness of God. Because since the very beginning of time, before time even itself, God was good. And when time is no more for us here on this earth, God will still be good. Come on, I come to remind somebody tonight that God is still good. And He will always be good. You could have a car wreck tonight and be paralyzed from your neck down, but that don't change the fact that God is still good. I know how the world wants to paint him and I know that they mistake his judgment and his word for restrictions and then for things that limit us on fun. But you know what all it is is wrapped up goodness for each and every one of us. In the book of Psalms chapter 100, let me read some verses here for us. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Is anybody glad that you're still walking this life with Jesus? You don't feel like turning around yet. Is that what you're telling me? You don't feel like giving up yet. When you wake up in the morning and have the opportunity to serve him, you're doing it with gladness. All right, let's keep that up. It says, come before his presence with singing. It says, know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Tells us in verse 4 to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and to bless his name. But verse 5 tells us for the Lord 
is good, period. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. I'm thankful tonight that we serve a God that's good. Because I'm going to tell you, he could have been any old way. We could have had a God that wasn't good. We could have had a God that didn't want to shed his blood for you and I. We could have had a God that let us be consumed in hell fire. But he said, I love you. You're my children. You're the sheep of my pasture. I'm thankful that we serve a good God. In the book of Psalms chapter 23, David was writing here. And in the sixth verse, he gave us some things that were following him in his life. You know, it's not just simply that God is good, but I have a strong belief that we can live not just knowing God is good, but we can live in the goodness of God. Because it's not simply that He just wants to be good, but He loves you and I so much that He wants us to experience His goodness. And David knew this very well as he said in verse 6, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm thankful I just don't know God's good, but he said there's some goodness that every step I take, as long as I'm walking according to his plan and his will, it may not look good. There may be a circumstance I'm walking through that I don't have an answer to. But he said, if you'll just turn around, there's some goodness that's following you every step that you took. I know what some of you may have left some things at home tonight that you don't want to go back to. But can I tell you, even when you walk back into that circumstance, you walk back into that hell, if you'll just take a look behind you, goodness is following you every step of the way. Oh, I'm going to get through to somebody here tonight. You think you're in the muck and the mire, but if you'll just take a look behind you, there's goodness and mercy that's following you I'm thankful, I'm thankful that goodness is behind me. That's not all. The Bible goes on to tell us in the book of James 1 and 17 that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and it cometh down from the Father of lights whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So James tells us that goodness ain't just behind us, but when we look up, we can see some more goodness because it said every good and every perfect gift cometh down from above. So we don't just know that God is good. There's more to the equation. Goodness is behind us, but that ain't all. Goodness is also up above us. Can I remind somebody that when you receive the Spirit of God in your life, you got baptized with a perfect gift of goodness that man cannot give, that the doctor cannot prescribe, but it came straight from heaven heaven's portal and baptized you with the spirit of goodness that's why when you read about the gifts of the spirit one of them is goodness because when the Holy Ghost filled you he filled you with goodness so not only do we have goodness behind us, not only do we have goodness above us but we got goodness that's living inside of us today I feel like preaching here tonight. I'm thankful that God gives good gifts. He's not like in just an earthly father. The Bible says that fathers, if a child asks them for bread, he's not going to give them a snake. But it said, how much better gifts will God give unto his children? I'm thankful that we still serve a God that's pouring out good gifts for those who love him and for those who serve him. Did you come in needing something good in your world? Just look up before you leave. You can be baptized with goodness in your world. That ain't all. Not just behind us, 
not just above us, not just in us, but the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. So the goodness ain't just behind us. It's not just above us. It's not just in us. But the things that we don't understand and the things that look like a mess and look like an entanglement, look like a dead end road. God said, I'm taking those very things and I'm mixing them all together and I'm making them into something good. Who am I preaching to here tonight that's looking at your current situation and all you see is negativity and pessimism and all you see is a dead end road but you need to hear the scripture again today as God said I'm working it together for good hear me now I'm working it together for good so it ain't just above me it ain't just in me it ain't just behind me but the mess that looks like a mess God said if you're loving me and you're called according to my purpose I got goodness in your future not just above me not just behind me not just in me, but it's ahead of me. Come on, somebody. I know it looks bad now. I know it looks bleak now. I know it looks dark now. I know it looks unconquerable now. But God said, I'm working it together for good. I'm working it. When I get my hands in it, I'm making a masterpiece. When I get my hands in it, I turn the impossible into possible. When I get my hands in it, I heal broken bodies. I burn out cancer. When I get in it. You know what else happens when God opens up his mouth and something becomes realistic? It ain't got a choice but to be good. Because in the beginning of time in the book of Genesis, when God opened his mouth and he started to speak, things began to happen. Now, if me and you would have looked at the waters, we may have thought, that don't look too good. When we looked at the fowls of the air and we looked at the beast and we looked at the grass and the flowers and the trees, we may have said it could have been a little bit better. But God said, if I open my mouth and I did it, it's good. It's good. You know what I think somebody needs in this house tonight? You just need God to open up his mouth and speak some things into your world that are good, that are holy, that are righteous, that are pleasing to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands unto the Lord tonight. I'm thankful that good things are still ahead. They gave me the diagnosis, but God said he's working it together for good. Why don't somebody get that mentality? You believe you're in God's will? What are you doing questioning what he's doing in your world? You believe you're walking according to scriptures? You believe you're walking into the spirit? Why do you keep questioning God and asking him what you're doing? You just need to trust that whatever he's doing and whatever it looks like, whatever it sounds like, at the end of the day, it's going to be good. I come to remind somebody in this house tonight that you may see negativity and you may have negativity coming into your ears, but thank God that we know that he's working it together 
for good. Remember, those are miracle working hands. They may have nail prints in them, but they're miracle working hands. Hey, he ain't never made a masterpiece that looks bad. He turns the good, the bad into the good. Hallelujah. 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 You know what? I'm thankful God still turns things we messed up and we beat up and we scarred up and we darkened up into something that can be used for the kingdom of God. Who would have thought that a Christian killer could become an apostle to every Gentile that walked on the earth? Who would have thought that a dirty mouth fisherman would be standing up on the day of Pentecost preaching the inaugural message for the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Who would have thought it? Not me. But God said, I'm working it. I'm working it. I'm working it together for good. Who would have thought that one of the first ladies that came to the tomb used to have seven devils living inside of her? Why did he choose her? I don't know, but I thank God he did. Why did he choose you to put you through a mess? I don't know why, but I'm thankful he did because he's working it together for good. I'm thankful he's working it together. Woo. I'm thankful that he ain't gave up on the church yet. I think we still got a few wrinkles. We got a few spots. Got a few blemishes. But you know what? He ain't through with us yet. <laughs> Somebody thought he was through with you. Somebody thought he was through with you. Hey, but to somebody, he's just getting started. He's got you right where he wants you. He's got you in the position for a miracle. You just got to believe that it is going to be good. Somebody say it. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. I'm thankful for the goodness of God. The book of Romans chapter 12 tells us this. I beseech you therefore, brethren, By the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You want to live in the goodness of God? Become a living sacrifice. Become somebody who day in and day out said, God, I I just want to please you. Oh, your shataba, oh, God, I just want to please you, God. I just want you to smile on me. It may not look like goodness, but if I'm in your will, it can't help but be good. It says, be not conformed to this world. See, the world has goodness, and God has goodness. But it says, "Don't, don't be conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to tell somebody here tonight, if you want to start living in the goodness of God, you need to find his will for your world. What is it? I don't know, ask him. Ask him where you should be. Ask him what your life should look like. Ask him what you should dress like. Ask him what you should look like. Ask him what you should talk like. And believe me, when he transforms you by the renewing of your mind, you're going to be in his good and perfect and acceptable will for your world. We got to find out what is good. What is good, God? What do you consider good? 
I know that the preacher, he's preaching the word and he tells me sometimes what the goodness needs to be in my world, God. But I want to know what is good. What does good look like to you? I'm not asking what good looks like to us. I want to know what does good look like to him. Our good could look like craziness to the world. But if it looks good to him, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. But we got to prove that. Prove it. We got to test it. We got to try it. We got to see. That's why it tells us in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, prove all things. Put them on the scale. You got to know what's good, what's bad. What's righteous, what's unrighteous. And it says, when you find out what it is, you better hold on to it. What are you telling me, pastor? I'm telling you, we can hold on to the goodness of God it's not just above us it's not just behind us it's not just in us it's not just ahead of us but look here the Bible says we can hold on to the goodness of God when we wake up in the morning we can wake up with the goodness hand in hand with each and every one of us but we gotta take hold of it we gotta know what it looks like we got to know exactly what God wants for us. Come on, church, I'm talking about a life that's filled and consumed with the goodness of God. Romans 12 and 9 says, Abhor that which is evil. Turn from that which is evil. Refuse that which is evil. And then it says, Cleave, cleave, cleave to that which is good. There was a man in scripture, can't remember his name. But the Bible said when he got done fighting the fight he was fighting he was cleaving to a sword so hard that his hand could not be released from it. The sword had to literally be ripped from his hand because he had made up his mind I'm not dropping the very thing that's keeping me afloat. We got to determine today and tonight and every day. I'm not letting go of the very thing that's keeping me alive and well. I'm going to cleave to it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not putting down that which is good. My husband files for divorce. I'm not putting down that which is good. My friends may forsake me, but I'm not putting down that which is good. I must hold on to the goodness of God. Hallelujah. 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 Book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 8. Oh, taste. Woo! Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Behind you, that's not enough. In front of you, that's not enough. Holding on to your hand, that's not enough. Above you, that's not enough. Inside you, that's not enough. God said, I want you to taste how good I am. I want you to put it in your mouth and experience my goodness for yourself. It's one thing, hope, for somebody to come to me and say, you know what? I ate a wonderful steak last night at that nice restaurant. That's good. I'm just taking their word for it. I wasn't there. My knife didn't seek into that meat, Brother Chris. My fork didn't pick it up. All I'm doing is hearing about it. Hearing about it ain't enough for me. Ain't enough for me. It wasn't. 
hearing and hearing and hearing of that that I had the Holy Ghost, uh, it wasn't enough for me. I got down on my knees and I told God, uh, I said, I'm fasting uh, because I know your word says uh, we got to speak in a heavenly language uh, and that's the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Uh, God, uh, somebody told me I had it, uh, but I want to know uh, and I want to taste uh, for myself. Uh, I want to feel that language uh, coming off the end of my tongue. Uh, I want to taste uh, and see that the Lord is good I gotta have a taste of it hey I don't want the taste of alcohol I don't want the taste of drugs I don't want the taste of bitterness I don't want a taste of wrath I want to taste goodness that only comes from the throne of God hear me now somebody's got to decide you'd rather taste what's good to God than taste what feels good to you you know what because that's a crucifixion of flesh come on come on somebody we do it because it tastes good. We do it because it makes us feel good. But in the midst of our tasting and feeling what's good to this world, God is on the throne saying if you can only taste what I have prepared for you, you put everything else down and decide you want me. Y'all ready for me to be done? Look what verse 9 says. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Fear the Lord, ye his saints. Look what it says. For there's no want to them that fear him. There's no want. You walk in the fear and the reverence of God, no want. What do you mean? You're never going to get hungry again, never going to get thirsty. No, no, no. When you got a need... You got a God that said, I'll supply all your need according to your riches and your glory. You fear me? There's a reward. Those that fear him have a reward. Those that reverence him have a reward in God. And it goes on to say in verse 10, the young lions do lack and they suffer hunger. They get hungry. Oh, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. What are you saying? If it's good, he's got it. If it's good, he's got it. And if you'll seek for him, he's got something good in store for you. I wonder how many times we quit before the goodness shows up. One more knock. What if that was the one knock that it was going to take for him to open up that door you've been praying about for two or three years? What if opening your mouth one more time was that very prayer for your kid that hasn't darkened the church doors in years to come busting back through? He said, any good thing, if you seek for it, I'll give it to you. Church, we ain't done seeking yet. Why? Because there's some good things we still have not possessed. There's some good things we still ain't touched. There's some good things that we've still been praying about and fasting about and seeking about. And the Bible says, if we seek after the Lord, we shall not want any good thing. Hallelujah. What does the Bible tell us in another verse? He that is willing and obedient. He that is willing and obedient. He that is willing and obedient. What happens? He's going to eat the good of the land. I'm willing, God. I'll be obedient. Show me what's good. Show me what's pleasing. Show me what's acceptable. I want to commit to it. I'm not in the business of eating thorns and thistles. I did enough of that in the world. But I want the good land. I want the good fruit. I want the good blessings. I want the good nourishment that only comes from you. Maybe I'll put this verse in here to be funny. Come to my mind. I was thinking about goodness. It tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 22. Some of you may think to yourself, well, they sport it, they already got it. 
Where's the goodness in my world? Where's your wife sitting? So find your wife, find the good thing. Sitting there at your house, depressed, stressed out from work, just don't see anything good. Don't see it working together. What about that spouse you laid aside? Don't forget, you're laying down men. I need to remind myself of this. We're laying down beside God's blessing and beside God's goodness in a world. Not good that man should be alone. Send him out. Come on, somebody, I want to remind you today that the goodness of God is all around us, but will we open up our eyes and see it? We open up our eyes and see it. Don't look in another direction. Don't look at another website. Come on. Don't look at another movie. Look beside you. There she is. The goodness that God has placed in your life. The other one may look good to the world. The other one may dress good to the world. But that woman who's beside you that dresses holy and modest and talks right and lives right, God said, that's my goodness. That's the goodness that I've placed in your world. I've placed her there. I've placed her there. I've placed her there. What am I telling you? If we have our eyes in any direction on any woman besides our wife, it's time that we look at our wife and say, you are the goodness that God has placed in my world. Hey, that ain't going to get many claps. I hope I stepped on your toes. I hope you didn't like what I just said, but it's good anyway. This preacher needs to hear it. We all need to hear it. Thank God that he smiled on me when he gave me my wife. Thank God for the goodness of God. I didn't deserve it. Deserved old snaggletooth. But I deserved. Maybe I don't need to dive into that rabbit hole. Come on, men. Some of us don't deserve who we got. God smiled on us, though. Gave us a good, good rule. All right. Let's get to the book of Philippians, chapter 4 and verse 8. I'm going to help somebody right here. What it says. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things that are over a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. are unjust, whatsoever things are dirty, whatsoever things are ugly, whatsoever things are of a bad report. Didn't say that. Why in the world are we spending so much time thinking about those things? Come on. I'm trying to help somebody here. Somebody told a lie on you? Get it out of your mind. God said, think on the things that are honest. Somebody said something that was untrue. Maybe a brother or sister sitting beside you on the pew. Quit thinking about it. Says, think of the things that are true. The unjust thing, somebody did you wrong, get it out of your mind. The Bible said, whatsoever things are just, think of those things. I know we've got temptation, dirty things coming into our minds, thinking about things that are impure and unholy, but the Bible says you need to think on things that are pure. I know you got a lot of ugly in your world, but that don't mean you got to sit around and think about it. It says, whatsoever things are lovely, think on these things. I know you're having problems in your relationship. I know your finances look bad, but think on good things. Think on holy things. Think on just things. 
We can think about the worst thing in the world that's going to happen. I may wake up in the morning with measles. They wake up in the morning with the flu. My kid may fall out of her window tonight, break her neck and die. Hey, there's so many different scenarios. We can sit around and ponder on our minds, think about everything's going wrong. Somebody, who's going to win the election? Who's going to get in the Senate? I don't care who gets in there. God said, think on the things that are pure, that are holy, that are good of a good report. What in the world did the children of Israel do when those 10 spies come back with a bad report? They started thinking on them. All they saw were the giants. All they saw were the walled and fenced cities. All they saw were the armies that would consume them and they looked like grasshoppers in their sight. They were so focused on the bad report. They weren't looking at the grapes. They weren't looking at God's word that said I've already given it into your hands. What are you saying preacher? I'm telling you we can talk ourselves out of a miracle just by what we think in our minds. That ain't popular. I want to think about the goodness of God, everybody. I want to think about the goodness of God. I'm working to close. Stand to your feet across the house, if you will. I know I've been long. Don't apologize for it. I just feel like we needed to hear this tonight. All right. I come to talk to somebody who's been questioning whether God is good in your life or not. Brother Hunter. Remind somebody tonight. The Bible says that God is that good shepherd. He's a good shepherd, Brother Tony. Good shepherd. I want to remind you of something. David wrote, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. That's what he says. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Just because God's got a rod and a staff in his hand does not make him bad. It makes him good. You think just because he put borders in his word that it makes him bad? No, 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 no. Brother Tanner, when that sheep starts going somewhere he don't need to be going, just takes that staff, redirects him, hey, go this path. That staff helps him walk, helps him go. But also, there could be something coming against that herd. He uses that staff as a weapon. You're not going to touch my sheep. You thought that was to beat you? No, 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 no. No. That was to protect you. You thought the staff was to choke you? No, you got to understand, he saw what was going to get you before you saw what was going to get you. He's that good shepherd. The Bible said, He leads us beside the still waters. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth our soul. I want to remind somebody today, we don't just have a shepherd, Brother Chris. We got a good shepherd. Maybe I'm talking to somebody tonight that's seen the rod and staff. You've seen the structure and you said, God, I can't live this way. There's no way I can abide in it. There's no way I can stay in it. And maybe you ran off. Maybe you got separated for a while. Maybe you're here tonight. But in your mind, you are so far away from God and the church that we are in a far distance. And you're just waiting on the chance for the herd to keep moving this way. Oh, but let me remind you about a good shepherd tonight. The one who leaves the 99 to find you. You thought he just let you run away. He may not have showed up just yet. But he's on his way. He's on his way. That good shepherd. Brother Tanner, what does it say to us? He didn't get there with a staff, beat you over the head and say, why did you run away? He didn't take the rod and beat you to a pulp. But Brother Chris said, it come to you. He said, you don't even have to walk back. I'm putting you on my shoulders. Brother Daddy, let him put him on, he put him on your shoulders. 
You may think I'm so burned down by this world. How can God even bring me back to the fold? Just let him put, put you on his back. You may have found yourself in a pig pen tonight, but he's not just a good shepherd. But the Bible says he's a good father. He's an everlasting father. And he may have let you get in the pig pen, but the Bible said he's standing outside the gate watching for your return. And you may be walking back beaten and battered and depressed and thinking I'm going to have to face this God that I've failed time and time again and you may feel like there's no way I'm coming back I can't go to the altar I can't lift my hands I'm too ashamed I'm too bitter but before some of you can even decide to turn around the Bible said that that father came running to you Rejoicing, hugging, kissing. Maybe he's taking me back to the house to beat me. Maybe he's taking me back to the house to kill me. No, 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 no. Because when you get there, he said, I got a robe for you. I got a ring for you. He said, kill the good calf, the fatted calf, and prepare it. We're going to have a celebration. What are you getting to tonight, Pastor? Pastor. I'm telling you, if you have left the goodness of God, the goodness of God did not leave you. It's just waiting on your return. It's waiting for that communion between you and God. Lift your hands all across this house. Let me talk to a beaten and broken person right now. You are missing the goodness of God. You know what it feels like. You know what it feels like to have peace and joy and love. And you may have thought, there's no way I can ever have it again. Come on, church. Will you help me pray now? Will the good shepherd show up here tonight? Come on, I could call your name right now, but I'm not going to. I see you in my mind, and I believe God is wanting to work on your behalf. Goodness awaits. Blessing awaits. Come on, I know it's Wednesday night. Come on, ma'am, I'm pleading with you. Come on, ma'am, I'm pleading with you tonight. Come on, ma'am, I'm pleading with you tonight. The devil would love to keep you where you are. Oh. But the Father, the Father, the Father's drawing you. The Father's drawing you. The Father's drawing you. There's hope. There's still hope. There's still life after the pig pen. Come on, somebody. There's still life after the pig pen. God wants us to live in goodness. Come on, don't miss your opportunity tonight. If you feel God pulling on your heart, don't miss that embrace. Don't miss that robe. Don't miss that ring. Don't miss that celebration. Oh, Your distance, hear me now. Your distance didn't destroy God's goodness. Your distance did not destroy God's goodness. It's still alive and well for you. Come on, somebody, don't make me come get you. Don't make me come get you. Let God pull you. I 
God loves you. God loves you, sir. God loves you, ma'am. Oh, would you speak to us tonight, God? Would you speak into your people here tonight, God? Come on, somebody, taste and see. Taste and see. Taste and see that he's good.